All right, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick's Family Power. So this video is going to be about a bodybuilder by the name of Milos Sarsev. Now, Milos is a guy who is still very active on Instagram. Um, I actually follow his Instagram page. It's a great Instagram page if you're into the classic bodybuilding stuff because what Milos essentially does on that page is he reposts just pictures of classic bodybuilders and old school guys. Um, and it's just really entertaining to kind of see some of these old pictures that you know, many people from our generation probably haven't seen before. So I really like what he's doing with his Instagram. So if you want to check him out there, um, there'll be a link in the description below. But Milos himself was actually a very accomplished bodybuilder. Um, he competed in the 80s, primarily in the 90s, then a little bit in the 2000s as well. Um, one of the things that Milos was famous for was competing very, very frequently. And we're talking maybe 10 or more shows in a year um, in some cases. So the two things that Milos was most famous for as a bodybuilder, number one, were his abs. I mean, he had some of the craziest looking abs in bodybuilding at the time. Um, and some of his ab training videos are pretty viral of him doing like hanging uh, leg raises for his abs. His abs look really, really good. So that's one of the things that was kind of his calling card. Um, and number two would be his conditioning. He had really good conditioning on stage. And those were the two things that he primarily had working in his favor. Now working against him, um, his arms were kind of undersized. And the size of his arms really seemed to work against him in terms of his placing. So one of the things that that really uh, led to was another thing that he's known for is experimenting with synthol. So there's actually an incident where he accidentally injected the synthol directly into a vein and that ended up some getting back to uh, somewhere pretty close to his heart um, because he injected it into his vein and he ended up in the hospital nearly dying. So there's a lot of famous photos out there of Milo Sarsev in the hospital um, where his skin is burned and he looks really, really, he just looks really bad. And a lot of people falsely attribute that to this experience with Synthol where he was also put in the hospital. But this is actually an entirely separate incident. So these photos that you'll see of Milos, you know, just looking really bad in the hospital, that's from a separate incident where he was on the set of a movie. Um, and there was an explosion on that movie, which gave him third degree burns. Um, and that's what you're seeing, you know, on his face and on his arms. That's not as a result of the synthol. This was a completely separate incident. So some people that are falsely attributing these pictures to the synthol incident are just not true. So let's have a look at Milos's competitive career as a bodybuilder. So like I said, it is a very, very vast competitive history. Some years um, in a 12 month span, he would do, you know, 10 to 12 shows. So there were, there were some years where he just competed a crazy amount of shows. Primarily a lot of those Grand Prix in England, Finland, France, Italy, Spain, Switzerland, all those Grand Prix out there in Europe. Um, those were a lot of the shows where he would rack up a lot of top six finishes um, and really added a lot of, uh, you know, beefiness to his competitive resume. So we're going to kind of gloss over those Grand Prix. Suffice to say, um, he had a lot of top six finishes at the Grand Prix um, and those really added up. So let's focus on some of the shows that he actually won, and then we'll focus on his Olympia placings because I think those are the two most important things. Um, so he didn't actually win a lot of shows. He has kind of had a lot of higher up placings. So he won the 1997 Canada Pro Cup. Also very noteworthy is he placed second at the 1997 Night of Champions, which is arguably one of the three biggest shows in bodybuilding in the 90s. That was a very good finish for him. Um, 1997 will also be his best year at the Olympia with a 10th place finish. And then 1997, he would also win the Toronto Pro Invitational. So arguably 1997 was the best year of Milos's career. So in addition to those wins, he also had a second place finish at the 1999 Ironman Pro, which again is a very big show in bodybuilding. The 1997 Night of Champions, like I mentioned, he had that second place finish as well. Then he also had a second place finish at the 1999 Toronto Pro. Then his placing kind of started to slip from there. Um, and then in 2003, his final competition would be the Night of Champions, where he would place ninth. So he would go from second to ninth. So obviously his placings were dropping. So as far as the Olympia goes, his highest Olympia placing was 10th place, and he placed 10th in both 1997 and 1999. Um, aside from that, he was pretty much outside of the top 10 at every Mr. Olympia. So he had an 11th place finish in 1998 at the Olympia, 13th at the 1994 Olympia, 11th at the 1993 Olympia, 16th at the 1992 Olympia, um, and 16th at the 1991 Olympia as well. So overall, his Olympia placings were not that good because he made the top 10 only twice, um, and he never, crafted, he never cracked the top six or anything like that. 
So currently, Milos is 53 years old. Um, he, he currently works as his personal trainer, and he has some kind of supplement line, the Milos Sarsef signature line, um, which he's currently running. And of course, he is managing that Instagram page, which has a pretty large following. Um, so you guys can go follow that if you're interested. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video on Milos. Please give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Nick Strength and Power, signing out.